It's time for Live on Lanier. Welcome to Live on Lanier, a monthly podcast brought to you by the Lake Lanier Association. This month, we'll start out talking with Sergeant Bart Hendricks from the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. I was a little surprised to learn how popular hunting is on Lake Lanier, and Sergeant Hendricks is here to discuss hunting and fishing, along with fall and winter boating safety tips and some educational resources available from the DNR. Following that, we went on site with Dawson County to discuss and thank them for their role in shore sweep on two fronts. Not only does the county handle all the debris that comes ashore at Warhill Park from the boat ramp to the landfill, they also provide free hot dog lunches to all the Warhill Park volunteers via Keep Dawson Beautiful. Of course, there are multiple counties and entities that help make Shore Sweep a huge success each year. Just a portion of that list we owe a great amount of gratitude would include Hall County with the Hall County Department of Solid Waste and Keep All Beautiful Folks, Forsyth County Parks and Recreation Department and Keep Forsyth County Beautiful, the Gwinnett County Water Management Resources Department, the City of Gainesville Parks and Recreation Department, Lake Lanier Islands, and of course the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Lake Lanier Project Management Office. As always, if you'd like more information regarding the Lake Lanier Association's activities and programs, or how you can become a member, please visit our website at lakelanier.org. That's lakelanier.org. Thanks for tuning in, and please stay tuned for Live on Lanier, brought to you by the Lake Lanier Association. Lake Lanier Association strives to keep Lake Lanier safe for the 12 million people who use it for recreational enjoyment each year. We promote safe boating through our installation and maintenance of 300 solar lights on Lanier for safer boating after dark, and with our life jacket lunar stations and promoting safety courses. The Lake Lanier Association is committed to educate and protect all who visit the lake each year. Learn more about the work of the Lake Lanier Association at lakelanier.org. Well, welcome to this month's episode of Live on Lanier, and we're very happy to be joined in the Lake Lanier Association offices by Sergeant Bart Hendricks. Bart, welcome. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your joining us. Uh, Sergeant Hendricks has been on patrol here in the state of Georgia for quite some time, but we're welcoming him to Lake Lanier just in the last month or so. Is that true? That's true. Yes. Give us a little bit of your background, if you could, please. All right. So uh, I'm a Cherokee County native, uh, grew up hunting and fishing, and in doing so, found my passion for being the outdoors. There you go. So after college, game warden seemed to kind of fit. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to do. And uh, that's where I've been. I've been uh, with the department now for 19 years. And of that time, all of it has been spent in our region one office located in Ackworth, Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, I was assigned to Fulton County for a short time, but then transferred to Cherokee County and spent 13 and a half years uh, patrolling Alatoona Lake. Mm -hmm. And then recently, uh, well, three years ago, promoted to administrative sergeant over evidence, uh, supplies, vehicles, uh, equipment mm -hmm. that the men and women need in the field uh, and spent three years there. And then just recently in September, transferred uh, to the field sergeant position here in Region 2, which covers Forsyth Hall, Banks, and Jackson County. Which includes Lake Lanier. Yes. So hey, what, Lake Lanier. Well, welcome aboard. Obviously, you have a very, very strong background all right here in northeast Georgia. A little bit of difference between Alatoona and Lake Lanier when you're out there on a boat, though, huh? Just a little bit. <laughs> well, a couple of thousand extra boaters, it seems like. There you go. Well, we're happy to have you. Welcome to Lake Lanier. Hope Thanks. it's a long and successful tenure for you here. And the fact that you're a hunter and fisherman really segues right into why it was we wanted to have the Department of Natural Resources back on going into fall and winter is we have a much more active fishing and hunting season on the lake than I realized. Sure, we do. Uh, fall is a great time to get outside. It's cooler temperatures to begin with, and the fishing is actually a little bit better mm -hmm. this time of year. Well, more specifically, I love our fishermen. Uh, we've got a crappy club that's huge for us and shore sweep. They're great guys. So the hunting part of it was a little bit of a surprise to me. I had no idea there was that much hunting activity on Lake Lanier. Can you give us a little bit of idea of what type of hunting takes place and how that all works? Sure. Uh, so there is quite a bit of hunting that does happen on Lanier. Um, waterfowl hunting is one of the biggest 
mm -hmm. uh, complaints that our office will receive throughout the year. And it's because hunters are out there early in the morning and they're firing off shots early in the morning mm -hmm. while everybody else is trying to sleep. But there's a, they do have to have all the required license for hunting waterfowl. And they must abide by the regulations that are set being 600 feet from any really improved structure on the lake mm -hmm. in order to duck hunt or waterfowl hunt. Would a dock be counted as an improved structure? That's correct, yeah. So that's one. First and foremost, I think that's something people would really like to know is you have to be at least 600 feet away from any residential area, dock, anything like that before Boat you ramps, can even... bridges. Okay. Everything. Great. Is there, is there a high level of training that the hunters take or they have to pass a test or something to get their license to be able to do that? Well, they do have to pass the hunter safety course, okay. which we offer. Uh, and there's multiple ways you can take that. You can take it in person or you can take it online. Mm -hmm. um, and if you choose the in-person route, then you'll have to go to GoHuntGeorgia.com, and Georgia is spelled out, uh, and you can sign up for an in-person class. You just choose the county you want to attend, sign up for that class, and it is required of anyone that's going to be hunting from age 16 and above mm -hmm. in order so that they can get their license. That's really interesting. What other type of hunting is common on Lake Lanier? Well, it's not so much common as it is, uh, I guess, by lottery, but the Corps of Engineers does have open hunting areas mm -hmm. that uh, are archery only, and it's called their island hunt. Mm -hmm. And you must apply for the permit, and then you can go hunt, and they have specific dates set up, and you can find those dates on their websites mm -hmm. with Lanier hunting, and then go to that area. Uh, but those are archery hunts, and they're only open for a certain number of days throughout the hunting season. Gotcha. They all are archery hunting. Gotcha. And I believe you're talking about thinning the herds when we have deer populations that are growing too big. That's nature, that sort of nature of thing. Yeah, I mean, the hunter is one of the biggest aspects of population control and ensuring that the habitat is maintained sure. for the uh, animals. Gotcha. Gotcha. And again, that requires a, a draw, lottery drawing through the Corps of Engineers. That's not a DNR specific activity. No, that's the Corps of Engineers. Okay, great. Well, again, I wasn't familiar with how popular hunting was on the lake and how much it sure. takes place. So it's it's good to have that natural background. If someone's concerned someone's hunting too close to their dock, what's the natural thing to do? So the first thing they're going to do is, you know, probably make that confrontation. Hopefully it's not a physical or a violent confrontation between mm -hmm. the uh, hunter and the homeowner. Uh, what they need to do is just make a note of it uh, and then to get a quicker response. They should call the county sheriff's office where they're at. The county sheriff's office has all of our officers' contact numbers, mm -hmm. and then they can turn around and contact us, and one of our officers will respond to the scene, see what's going on. Okay. Um, but also, they can uh, call Star GSP, which we are dispatched through the State Patrol, and they can reach the Gainesville uh, State Patrol office, and then they'll be able to find out what county they're in, and dispatch will notify the game warden on call for that county. So STAR GSP, that STAR Georgia State Patrol GSP? That's correct. Okay, very good. And again, if someone's interested in hunting and they want to have a license, what's the proper way of going about getting one? Getting a license. So first, go out and get your hunter safety, which is not required. Uh, Georgia does offer a, an apprentice license in which they can hunt and fish. Mm -hmm. without having to take the hunter safety class. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a test drive for the program, see if they really want to do this or not before they get involved in the expenditures with the license. After that, though, if they want to continue with it, they do. If they're over the age of 16 or if they want to hunt by themselves between the ages of 12 and 15, they have to take the hunter safety class. Okay. That hunter safety class, like we mentioned earlier, can be online or in person. Uh, for those that are under the age of 16, there is an option that the entire class online is free if they'll go to our website and check out the links to go and do that. But once they complete the class, then they're able to go back and get uh, the hunting license, which is required for hunting small game. And then it's also required if you're going to be hunting that you get a big game license as well. Mm -hmm. So you must have both license in order to hunt big game. And then also you have to get, obtain a harvest record. So you're allowed two bucks and 10 does throughout the season. And each time you harvest one of those animals, you must record it on your harvest record. Gotcha. And with technology and everything that we have today, 
you're able to use the apps on phones and we do oh. have one for hours mm -hmm. and you can keep up with your license you can keep up with your harvest record everything online right there and it syncs up with your phone whenever you have service so just in case somebody's been fumbling looking for a pen and a piece of paper all the way up till now tell them one more time where to go to find that online so you can go to gohuntgeorgia.com you can find out all the links there as far as education goes follow those links and then when you buy your license, you can buy it online at the same location as well. Talking about hunting, you had mentioned earlier, there's actually one of the parks that's closed for hunting that people need to know about because they're not gonna be able to show up and walk their dog. That's right, yeah. So Don Carter State Park has a uh, hunt that is coming up on November 12th through the 14th. Mm -hmm. And it's in order to keep the balance of animals and people and habitat in check. Uh, and it's part of the process that we use but also the park is going to be closed those days for the public. So okay. no public admittance. Good to know. The 12th through the 14th. November 12th through 14th. That's correct. Super. Okay. And let's talk a little bit, shifting gears now. Fall and went, fall was one of my favorite times of year on Lake Lanier, especially when the leaves start changing. Sure. It's so beautiful to take those nice boat rides. And we still will cruise to the restaurants. We've got great restaurants out on Lanier right. that any time of year it gets to 60 degrees with no wind, we're out there. <laughs> so... There's not as many people, but in some ways it's a little bit more dangerous because of the water temperature and because of the lack of other people around for support if you need some sort of backup. Sure. Let's talk a little bit about fall and winter boating and safety tips. Sure. So fall, like you mentioned, is a great time to get out and explore the lake and see it without all the traffic and congestion we have in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, but what we want you to do is be mindful while you're out there. Lake levels are low this time of year as well. So mm -hmm. reefs. Believe it or not, people hit reef markers and they get knocked down and it may take some time before they get replaced. But be cognizant of the shallow reef markers across the lake. Mm -hmm. um, also, when you're riding around and you're enthralled and all the beautiful colors and everything else, don't get distracted and wind up running into another boat or something mm -hmm. else as well. Uh, Georgia doesn't have a distracted boating law that's in effect. But it is one of the causes for most of the accidents on the water, whether it be operator inattention or passenger occupant behavior while they're on the boat. Either way, the driver is distracted and it could be from cell phone. It could be from looking at the leaves, whatever. So just pay attention and follow the rules of the road while you're on the lake as well. That's a good time to mention. Always have your designated driver. Yes. And, and that always. designated driver is responsible for the safety of everybody on the boat is my, my rule of thumb. <laughs> Absolutely. So, and you know, the other part of that, and, and we talked a little bit earlier before we went on air, you get in the lake that time of year and it's not like summertime. It's so cold and you're not going to be able to swim as far. You're not going to be able to paddle. Don't go out alone, especially on a jet ski. Don't go out alone. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> If you need to, maybe you can hook your jet ski up to a water hose and run it the winter <laughs> if you need to, but yeah, 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 stay off the water. So give us some other safe boating tips we want to be able to keep in mind, if not all year round, specifically for winter, but all year round is fine too. Sure. So uh, we have noticed a, an increase in the cases of carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh my. Yeah. And a lot of this is caused by either exhaust fumes from the boat when they're under power, mm -hmm. uh, the wind going over the top of the boat, the air going over the top of the boat, circulates back around, picks up the fumes and pushes them back into the cabin. Mm -hmm. And if you start getting headaches for no reason, anything like that, it may be because of carbon monoxide poisoning. And the other thing that leads to it is generators. Generators on houseboats, generators, portable generators people have on their boats. They're leaving them outside. They may be in close proximity to them. And they're not really thinking about it that the generator's outside, but you can still get fumes in there. So if you can, get a carbon monoxide detector and install it in your boat. I think that would like be in the house. If you're a big enough boat to have a houseboat or a, a, <laughs> any boat with a generator on it, you should have that sure. on. There's been just every, every now and again, you hear those tragic stories where a couple of boats are side by side and one guy's generator slips into another guy's window. That's right. Nobody's thinking about it until it's too late. So just... No matter what size boat you have or where it has, if it has an internal generator, be very aware of where that exhaust comes out and always conscious of how dangerous it can be. Sure. And make sure that the uh, carbon monoxide detector is installed as low as possible. to the floor. Super, super. What other boating tips do we want to be sure to add? Uh, as far as uh, getting in the water, mm -hmm. hypothermia mm -hmm. occurs real quick this time of year. 
Uh, cold water submersions are anything between 70 degrees Fahrenheit and below. And it doesn't take long, less than a minute before you start losing feelings in your fingertips and then your limbs and you're in deep trouble. So if that fishing rod gets yanked out of your hands, just let it go. Just go to Academy. It's only a fishing rod. <laughs> Even if it's your favorite, right? Yep, <laughs> uh, anything else we want to be sure to cover? Wear your life jacket. Uh, if you have children on board, make the conscious effort to make sure that they are wearing their life jacket at all times. Sure. And you know, one thing, um, more coastal boating, but it's not a bad idea, especially this time of year on Lanier. If with pilots file a flight plan, file a boating plan. Make sure somebody knows where you're at, what you're doing. And if you don't show up, come and look for me. Okay? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, once again, we want to thank you for joining us here today. Welcome to Lake Lanier. We hope it's a long and very safe and successful relationship yes, for absolutely. you. And um, anybody wants any more information on those the Georgia boating laws, uh, the Georgia hunting laws, go to the website we've talked about. We've been there a couple of times. It's very informative and actually pretty easy to follow as well. It is, yes. If my brain can keep up with yours, yours <laughs> can too. So thank you for joining us. Hope it's a great, safe winter. Thanks a lot. Have a great day, Bart. You too. We'll be right back with more right after this. Lake Lanier Association's initiative for a clean lake preserves and protects Lake Lanier for everyone with programming and education resources like our annual shore sweep cleanup, our Adopt-a-Lake water testing program, erosion and sedimentation monitoring, abandoned dock and boat removal, and our Clean Lake Pledge. Learn more about the work of the Lake Lanier Association or how to become a member, a volunteer, or to donate at lakelanier.org. For our next segment, we went on site with Dawson County to meet and thank their crew for their role in Shore Sweep. The Warhill Park Shore Sweep location routinely removes record tons of trash, and the Dawson County team handles all the debris that comes ashore from the boat ramp all the way to disposal in the landfill. They also provide free hot dog lunches to all the Warhill Park volunteers via Keep Dawson Beautiful. So now, here's the crew from Dawson County. First of all, we want to start by thanking everyone for all you do at War Hill Park for Shore Sweep. It's an amazing effort, and what's the best part for me about it is we just stay out of your way, and you guys do it as well as anybody on any of our 15 sites on Lake Lanier. So let me start by saying thank you for all of that. Eddie, could you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your position and how you ended up so involved with Shore Sweep? Uh, Eddie Savage, Operations Manager. I've been lining up the equipment and the tools to do it for the last 10, 15 years, but I've never done it till this year. Ah. So I helped them this year do it. So it's pretty interesting. Okay, so but we really do appreciate all that you've done. And also to want to remind all of our listeners, every county needs a taskmaster to run these crews. And yeah. we've got one in Eddie. So we appreciate that. Stephen, how long have you been involved in Shore Sweep? Since it started. I think I did the very first one. It was the worst because it was a lot of stuff. Like, I guess it was the first one they did. Mm -hmm. And we had stuff all in the parking lot and the... It was, they were rolling out roll-offs roll back-to-back. So it was, it slowly gotten a little less and less every year, I guess, because it's, a lot of it's been picked up, but. It has, yeah. and we're, we're happy to see that yeah. progress every year. That very first one, I don't remember how, it's been a long time ago. It's probably, what, 10 years plus ago? It was bad. Yeah, it was real bad. That first one, I mean, it was like boat docks. I mean, it was all kind of, they brought all kind of stuff. That's when we left it through the weekend and it got blue across yeah. the lake. We had to spend a week picking it up on the lake. Yeah, we wasn't mm -hmm. actually there on the Saturday. They just, we let them bring it in and put it in the parking lot and then came, and then it made a mess. That's why we started coming and helping on Saturdays because it was easier to bring it in as they came and put it in the stuff than wait the whole weekend. Well, something else you and I talked about before we started rolling, Stephen, is you came up this year and said, well, how do you want us to set up? And I said, do whatever you think is best. Yeah. Doggone, you ended up putting two of the roll-offs down in the lake where boaters could come up without having to handle anything, go right from their boat into the roll-off. That was really cool. Worked great. So we appreciate all your effort and all the years that you've been doing <clears throat> it with us. Do you have a T-shirt for every year? Uh, I mean, I'll, yeah, somewhere. They're cool to have, right? Yeah. So uh, KA1 is Stephen's unofficial title. We'll just leave it right there like that. Josh Jones is also a head foreman and been with us for how long? How many years at Shore Sweep, Josh? Uh, about nine. About nine. Okay, so you've seen quite a bit over the years as well. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen come out of the lake at Shore Sweep? Um, I don't know. It changes every year. There's a probably the boat docks. The the boat docks come in that that's mostly rotted away. Mm-hmm. That's probably. I think so. 
It's always a big deal when the barge gets there too, isn't yeah, it? The barge is pretty cool. Yeah, one thing I also loved about how y'all set it up is when the barge came in, there was no double handling. Came off of the barge into the dumpsters. It was incredible. And waiting over here patiently, uh, that was KA2 just for the record. Justin Riddle, KA3, also a foreman. With how many years have you done Shore Sweep with us? Well, I've been here seven years, and I've helped with it some part every year. Do I remember seeing your family out there this year, too? That was mine. No. That was your family, okay. Okay, did they have a good time, by the way? Oh, yeah, they do every year. That was great. That was neat. So, what's your favorite part, and what's the weirdest thing you've seen come in in Shore Sweep? Oh, the weirdest thing is... Nice paddle boats, man. I, I wish I could get them off there and just bring one home. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they some nice stuff comes out of lake. Yeah. Well, again, you guys handle record amounts every year on Lake Lanier. This year was no different. Once again, War Hill Park pulled out more stuff than in a per tonnage basis than anywhere else. So on behalf of the Lake Lanier Association and all of us that are involved in Shore Sweep, we are so grateful and can't thank you enough. Thanks, guys. Job well done. Sure. I don't know if you're involved with it or not, but we pulled an, an abandoned boat out of Thompson Creek Park. Yes, yes, guy, Thompson Creek Park, yeah. The guy that did that, so. That was really There's another one there that needs to come out. Yeah, there's another one that needs to come out. <laughs> Tell us how you got the one you got out. out. Loader. Brute force. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Six kids steers, loaders, we pushed, pulled, it was heavy. Getting ready to jump on the other one that's still there that needs I to come out? I guess I got to get permission. I don't know. <laughs> the lake's got to go down first. We need divers to get it. Gotcha, gotcha, all right. We'll cover that again when you guys. They said we didn't get it back then because it was still registered or something. Yeah. Right. The whole derelict dock pro or vessel program is a whole nother thing, but we're really grateful for your help with that. Because so thank you. They for said that thing had been there a long time. Right. Right. Okay. Cool. Anybody else want to add anything or think of anything? Eddie had something he was going to say. Right, on, on behalf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Give us one of those on behalf. <laughs> Man, he's going to talk about how awesome this morning is. You'll find out how to put the dumpsters in the yeah. lake, by the way. Pardon me? I was going to. It was your idea to, to put the dumpsters I in the lake. I just talked to you. I, I, it was his idea. <laughs> <laughs> that, was was uh, that was a home run. That was a home run. Now that you've done it with us once, are you going to be back? Not on a fishing day. <laughs> Not on a fishing day. <laughs> well, All right. Thanks, guys. appreciate it very much. Well done. So next, we're going to speak with Robert Drury, the Public Works Director for Dawson County. Robert, thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Thank you for allowing me. Hope the gang enjoyed the donuts. I enjoy bringing them every year. You know, you're the Public Works Director, and what your team shows up and does is just so next level amazing. It's like the model for how Shore Sweep can work on Lake Lanier. That's a true statement. Mm -hmm. uh, watching those guys work and knowing what they did, it is phenomenal. Uh, and they are very dedicated to doing it. We appreciate that, and we appreciate your setting them up and allowing them the time, the equipment. I mean, it just can't happen without that. You've seen how heavy those floats are and how, yeah. what difficult they are to move. It's been the last, since I've been the, the person at War Hill Park, we've been between over 15 and up to 20 tons that come out yeah. on an annual basis. Yeah, we used uh, 20 cubic yard open top containers, mm -hmm. and I think we filled up four or five of them, something like that. Mm -hmm. We kept pulling them out and pulling them out because they kept coming. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of debris and a lot of trash out there, which obviously is a good thing to pull it out. I um, also want to thank the community uh, for stepping up. Mm -hmm. I think this is a highlight of this area. It's Lake Lanier. Mm -hmm. And uh, for them to be dedicated enough to do volunteer work is speaks well for this community. It really does. And, and about the community, there's two sides to that equation. One is your operation side. That's right. And then the deep cost, keep Dawson beautiful. Yeah. Does a tremendous job supporting us every year, year after year. And I'm glad you brought that up because keep Dawson beautiful is a, is a good organization and uh, it's got a good future. Well, on behalf of the Lake Lanier Association, thank you so very much. And we'll look forward to doing it again next thank you, year. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, we're now meeting with Tessa Webb, the administrative assistant who handles all of my panic phone calls and everything leading up to Shore Sweep to make sure all the pieces get in place at the right time because there's a lot of moving parts when we tie in with Dawson County. Also, Robbie Irvin, who's been my real hero of Shore Sweep for Dawson County the last couple of years, both from the Keep Dawson Beautiful side and the operation side. And we'd also like to welcome Aaron Ostendorf. Aaron's the PR specialist for Dawson County and in 2025, we'll be taking over Keep Dawson Beautiful as the executive director. So we appreciate your being here and joining us and looking forward to another great year next year. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Robbie, you've been involved in this in a while and you've seen all those moving parts. We are so appreciative of Dawson County and everything that they do. 
but you're doing it from the inside. How do you keep it all straight? Oh, I, if it wasn't for the guys that you've already interviewed, the team here, it wouldn't be straight. Mm -hmm. I, I go to them and very politely beg them to, to help out, and they very politely say, yes, we'll be glad to, and, and it all comes together. And, and it's not just what I do for Shore Sweep, quite frankly, is I go out and cook hot dogs. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the extent of of my job there. Those guys that are bringing in the the trash and the stuff that gets collected, those are the real heroes. Those are the real workers. Um, I just go out and have fun serving hot dogs. So um, I don't want to take the credit. The credit's due to them. That's awesome. Well, everybody appreciates the hot dogs. Trust me on that. We have guys that'll bring in big loads of stuff and then park the boats and bring their whole gang up. Right. And they're not leaving without their hot dogs. That's right. I think it's a War Hill Park tradition now. So yeah, we're appreciative of that. Tessa, I know the real answer on how he keeps everything straight because I'm always calling you. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us how long you've been involved with Shore Sweep and how all these moving parts seem to cross your desk. Um, I've been involved for probably about three years. Um, there's just trying to get all the pieces put together on who's mm -hmm. going to work and the timing and everything um, and just kind of piecing everybody's little group together to make sure that it all comes together and it's been a very great organization. And you've and turned it into a, a family event for you and your kids as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're really appreciative of having you coming out there and help us clean up. Aaron, did you know what you were getting into when you arrived in Dawson County? Uh, I mean, I was looking for opportunities, honestly, so I don't know if it it presented itself and I was looking to get involved, so it was the perfect opportunity. So I've had a chance to meet a couple of times with the team from Keep Dawson Beautiful. You've got a really active bunch that takes a lot of pride in what's going on around here. That's a really good thing to have. I think people need to be part of the cleanup efforts for their community. If they want it to look nice, you know, they have to show up. So we're grateful that people do. Sure. Are there other calendar events we can talk about for Keep Dawson Beautiful coming up that we'd like everybody on Lake Lanier to know about? Well, we do have a tire amnesty day that's coming up on the 9th of November, and uh, that is actually a grant-funded um, event uh, through EPD. So we'll be taking scrap tires, personal scrap tires, not business tires, but if anyone has old tires uh, laying in the yard or, or something like that, they can bring them up on the 9th and uh, deposit them for free. Terrific. Yeah. That's great. Okay, and then we get to see you around town at other events popping up. I always look forward to that as well. Absolutely. Well, we just can't thank you all enough. Again, Warhill Park is the golden star of Lake Lanier as far as handling the amount of trash that comes out and the people that come up and get involved. It would not happen without Dawson County. So thank you to all the commissioners. Thank you to the people of Dawson County, but especially thank you here to the team and staff of Dawson County for playing such a critical role in Lake Lanier Association's annual Shore Sweep event. It's absolutely our, our pleasure to help out. And hey, we get some donuts at the end of it all too, right? That's what we look forward to, it's the donuts. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, well, thank you all very all right. much. Thanks for joining us for Live on Lanier, brought to you by the Lake Lanier Association. We'd like to thank our guest this month, Sergeant Bart Hendricks from the Georgia Department of Natural Resources and the entire Shore Sweep crew from Dawson County, including Keep Dawson Beautiful. Please feel free to share this podcast with your lake friends and neighbors. And one more time, we'd like to invite you to join us as a member of the Lake Lanier Association. For more information, go to lakelanier.org. That's lakelanier.org. Be sure to join us next month for Live on Lanier.